we're excited you guys are here. Y'all help me welcome in the hub. I forgot to welcome in the hub. The hub is in the house. They are, as you see, we need some space. Some of y'all slept in because about one minute till I was like, dude, where's everybody at? And all y'all came in for, on for at least y'all were here for at least a second. So, uh, but we're so grateful for the hub, them guys helping us uh, make a little bit more room in here. We're so grateful for that. We've been in this series. It's complicated because... It's complicated. Life is complicated. Relationships are complicated. Money's complicated. Uh, today, I want to share with you a, a message that's going to help you maybe take take a little transition in your life. If you, if I want you to raise your hand, we're going to start early with a little bit of partic- participation this morning. Raise your hand if you've ever made the statement to yourself or out loud, uh, "How did I get here?" Come on. And I don't mean like in this church today. I'm talking about how in the world did I end up here? Uh, how did I end up in this addiction? How did I end up with all of these broken relationships in my in, in my path? How did I end up uh, overweight? Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like, like, by the way, uh, I'm going to follow Scott Bailey's little lead on this one. Uh, this takes a lot of work. This is at least 3,500 calories a day to maintain this. This is not an accident. This is on purpose, kind of. But you just you look up one day, or you look at some old pictures. You know, you see old pictures of yourself from 10 years ago, and you're just like, man, I used to have hair, or man, I used to, uh, you know, I, I say now I'm twice the man I used to be. Because what happened? How, how did we get here? How do we get here in our relationships? How do we get here in the situation that we're in where, where, where we have these broken relationships? And, and wouldn't it be amazing if we could go back and talk to our past self? Wouldn't it be amazing to go back to that point where you started seeing that veer in your life and go, man, if I could just go back to five-year five younger me. Uh, man, if I could just go back ten years ago, I would never have that relationship destroyed like it was because of something I put on social media or something I'm, I, I gossiped, something that somebody told to me in confidence. Man, we, we, what if we could go back and just, and just rethink the things that we've done? I, know, I want you to know today that, that you're not the only one that feels that way. Uh, there are many amazing people in the Bible that went through that kind of same that, that same situation. And what, while we may not see a, a, a verse of scripture that says, "Boy, I wish I could go back," you know that they could. It's like watching a movie. You're watching a movie. It's a horror movie, and and, and you know, there's a house that's out in the middle of the woods, and some kids are in the woods, and and they're like, "Let's go see that house. Let's go see this in a band. It's a it's a haunted house. Let's go see what's going on." If you could just scream at the screen, "Don't go in there." Right? Or, or maybe it's a, a movie about a boat wreck or a shipwreck. Man, don't get on the boat. And if you go back and talk to um, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, man, don't, don't get on the Titanic. By the way, he could have fit on the door. <laughs> In fact, I should have showed you. There's actually diagrams people have done to show you that he could have fit on that door. So if you're thinking about getting married, that's what life is like. They take everything, all right? <laughs> they take the whole door that's floating. They take the whole closet. Uh, they take the whole bed. I don't care if you got a king size or not. If you could just go back and tell, don't get on the boat, man. Don't don't go in that room. Like, like and I love going to movies with people that actually do that. They actually talk to the screen. Don't, man, don't do it, dude. There's a chain, there's a dude with a chainsaw and a mask in that room. Please don't go in there. But they, but obviously the movie wouldn't be the movie if they just stayed home, right? I mean, if Leonardo DiCaprio never got on the ship, we wouldn't be watching Titanic. So, so there are situations in life that we can just go back and say, man, don't do that, man. Don't post that on social media. Uh, don't, don't tell that person that. Uh, stay away from that food. Stay away from that drink. Stay away from that drug. What if we, get, what if we, there was something that God would give us to help us do that. I want you to know again today that, that you're not the only one going through it. David went through it. In fact, the Bible tells us in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1, in the spring of the year when kings normally go off to war, there was somewhere he was supposed to be and he wasn't. Anybody been there? Supposed to be somewhere and you wasn't. So now you can track people, right? Uh, he's just like, well, they ain't supposed to be there. Uh, if you're like me, you get a little bit too protective with your kids, and you're just like, uh, my phone says my daughter's in a ditch somewhere. Like 30 miles away from their space. Well, it didn't update. You know, they were, they were driving on that road, and it hasn't updated yet. You normally, you, you, this is where you're not supposed to be there. You're supposed to be over here. So where no, he was normally supposed to be, David sent Joab, the Israelite army, to fight the Ammonites. In other words, he went and sent somebody else to do the job God called him to do. Anybody been there? 
you don't know, the answer is yes. You have sent somebody else to do the job God called you to do. And then it says this, they destroyed the Ammonite army and laid siege to the city of uh, Rabbah. However, however, David stayed behind in Jerusalem. So there was somewhere he was supposed to be and he wasn't there. Now, if we could talk to David at this point, say, dude, you should have been at war. What's about to happen to you is going to change your life and millions of people are going to know about it. You, this is, this is, I mean, the Bible is the original social media. I mean, it's, 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 it's permanent. Like, we can read this story and millions more will continue to read this story. Right here we say, David, you should have been at war, man. You sh- you're supposed to be over there. God called you to war. You're a king. You're supposed to be leading your people. This is what happens when you're not where you're supposed to be. Late one afternoon after his midday rest, amen, that's called a nap. That's what we call a nap. So today when you go home and your kids are acting crazy, tell them God said, I'm supposed to take a nap and throw something at them and lock the door. That's what you're supposed to do. Lock the outside door so they can't get out of the house and lock your door so they can't get in your room. All right, that's, that's a little knowledge. That's a little wisdom. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a father of three. Emily and Luke are in the house today all the way from Oklahoma. So we're glad to have them. She turned 21 this week. So, uh, so we're glad to have them back in the house, and our house is whole for another couple of hours, and then we take them back to Houston to fly back home. But it's been great having them. But, but I know what it was like when the kids, listen, you can't even go to the bathroom in peace, can you? They're shoving their little fingers under the door trying to get stuff. Can I have your phone? Take a nap. Lock them out of the house, as my mom used to do. We got locked out of the house. But God says take a nap. But again, he was where he wasn't supposed to be, maybe not supposed to take a nap. So he takes a nap. God got, uh, David got out of bed, and he was walking on the roof of the palace. And as he looked out over the city, he noticed a woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. He was where he normally wasn't supposed to be and saw something he wasn't supposed to see. Y'all with me on that? When you're where you're not supposed to be, you'll see stuff you're not supposed to see. That's, that's fresh right there. That just came. That was, that was downloaded right now. When you're not supposed to, where you're not supposed to be, you'll see stuff you're not supposed to see. Write that down. That's, good. I'm a, that's, a whole nother, that's a whole series right there. So what if we could go back to, da- to David and say, David, man, if I could only tell you, if you only knew what was coming, if you only knew what was going to happen, because if you don't know what happened, David actually sent Uriah, which was her husband, brought him in and got him home. So he spent some time with his wife, maybe because she got pregnant. He got her pregnant, Bathsheba, wasn't even his wife. It was Uriah's wife, brought him home. He wouldn't, go to, he wouldn't go home because his men were fighting. He had honor. And so he had to send him off to the front lines and basically have him murdered. And if you read that story, you'll find out it wasn't just him, but some other guys died too. So, so, so David wasn't just the murderer of Uriah. He murdered several men because of what he did. If we could just go back and say, David, man, just if you could just do the right thing, do the right thing. And, and let me just challenge you, and I've said this before, but do the next right. You know what to do in your life right now? Do the next right thing. If you just do the right thing, if we just go back there, let me just tell you, God gives us something that we can have to help us do the next right thing. Did y'all know that? I'm going to give it to you today, and here's what it is. You got to get to know Wisdom's roommate. Did y'all know Wisdom had a roommate? Wisdom lives with somebody, and if you find out what Wisdom's roommate is and get a hold of it, it'll keep you out of predicaments like David got into and like maybe you're in right now. Maybe, maybe I've been in. Maybe I am in right now. So, so get to know Wisdom's roommate. Here it is. Here's Wisdom's roommate. We find it in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. I, Wisdom, dwell together with prudence. Now, this is a word we don't use a whole lot anymore. Prudence is important because prudence helps us see things the way God sees them. Prudence helps us see things in the future that maybe we won't see. But, but prudence is so important because prudence will keep you out of the mess that, you, that you're about to step into. And so I want you to get to know, uh, uh, you need to get to know prudence, and, which is wisdom's roommate. Now, the things about prudence is, prudence is a little bit different than wisdom, all right? So, so there's wisdom, and we obviously know that prudence and wisdom are different because it says wisdom dwells together with prudence and prudence with wisdom. So wisdom and prudence are two different things. Um, prudence is something that you have that's going to help you in the future uh, do the right things, and I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. In fact, I'm going to give you three things that prudence will do for you. But prudence is different than wisdom, and so, but here, here's how it's different to me. I see prudence is always practical, wisdom is not. Prudence is always practical. It's the practical next thing to do. Now, practical as God gives it to you. Some people don't see it that way. Wisdom's not always practical. 
Uh, I'll give you, uh, let me give you an example of how wisdom and prudence are different. Uh, God uh, had Solomon became king. God gave Solomon all this wisdom. And one night, uh, two, two prostitutes who were living in the same house, uh, they both had babies. One of the prostitutes rolled over and onto the, one of her, her baby and killed her baby. And then the other prostitute took that baby as her own, the, the, other, the other one that was alive. So, so the dead, there's, a, there's a dead baby, and so the mom of the dead baby goes against the live baby and claims her as her own. And so they come to, to Solomon and like, Solomon, we need some help with this. What, how do we fix this? Because we don't really know. There's no DNA test back then. There's no way to know whose baby it really is. So here's what Solomon did. The Bible says, then Solomon... The, then the king said, let's get the facts straight. Both of you claim to be the child, the living child is yours, and each says that the dead one belongs to the other. So here's what he says we're going to do. Bring me a sword. That wouldn't be prudent. Bring me a sword. That, that's, that's what he, he said, bring me a sword. And so they brought him a sword. Then he says, let's cut the baby in half. That's wisdom, but it wouldn't be prudent. Are y'all following me? There's a difference between wisdom and prudence. So he says, let's ch- cut the child in half, and we'll give the, 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 half of the child to each one. And obviously, you know the story. The real mother said, don't do that. I'd rather the baby be safe than to be with me. Send the baby to the other lady. And so I want you to know that there's a difference between the two. So we've got to get a hold of that first, that there's a difference between prudence and wisdom. So when you have prudence, it gives you three things. There are three things that prudence brings to you that's going to help you make the next right decision. Here's the first thing that prudence brings. Prudence creates purpose. Prudence creates purpose. Prudence gives you a reason to take another step. Uh, we ha- we want to help you do that to- here at WRC. We want to help you take that next step and find what that gift is and find what your calling is. If you need direction today, we want to help you find that through Growth Track. In fact, today, at least nine people are graduating Growth Track today. Can we give God some glory on that? That's awesome. That's nine brand new people, and I think there's a couple more that, that are, uh, want to get on some other teams, so they're going just a step forward today. So we're going to have people who are finding their purpose through Growth Track, and then we're going to help them plug into that purpose and find a team that's right for them. We were praying this morning uh, 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 as we were praying for the church and for the services, and, and God kind of gave me this prayer. Uh, listen, we don't, need, uh, we don't need people on the teams. We need teams. Teams don't need people. People need teams. Teams not, we're not, we don't have teams because teams need people. Now, we have some teams that could use a few people, and if you're a coach of one of those teams, you're nodding your head really profusely right now. Yes, we need people on those teams. But listen, teams don't need people. People need teams. You, you, got, you need to be a part of a bigger group than this just yourself. That's why you need to get into life group. It's very important. When we find our purpose, it helps us be more prudent in our life. Prudence helps us find our purpose. It actually creates purpose. That's what the book of Proverbs tells us. If you need some directions, get some prudence. Only simpletons, or the Bible would call fools, or those who, you know, immature, they believe everything they're told, but the prudent carefully consider their steps. Careful, and, and, and it's so crazy to me because we, we carefully consider our steps in a lot of ways. I mean, we, we should carefully consider our steps before we purchase a vehicle. You know, carefully consider your steps before you buy a house. But listen, you, can, you should carefully consider your steps before you let your kids watch TV. Come on. Have y'all seen what's on TV? You need, you need to carefully consider your steps before you let your kids hang out with certain kids. You need to carefully consider your steps before you spend a little too long in that chat room. So, so it helps you. it helps you see things a little bit different. Not, not just where not to go, but where you should actually go. So this is, this is very important that we, we carefully consider ourselves. That's what prudent does. Here's another verse for you. Verse 8 of chapter 14 says this, The prudent understand where they are going, but fools deceive themselves. Now, what does that mean, fools deceive themselves? Well, uh, we talk ourselves into some stuff. Um, and if, if you don't believe me, just look at some of the stuff that you bought at midnight one night because you just thought you had to have it. And if we can just get real, I see some husbands looking at some wives right now. That's next week, all right? Marriage is next week. I'm just creating a little tension so we can fix it next week. It's that thing you bought at midnight still in the box, ain't it? Just something. I bought something one day, and, and I thought it was going to be this, this big, nice thing I was going to have. I can't remember what it was now, but it came in, and, and obviously it wasn't what I thought because it was supposed to be this big, and it was like this big, whatever it was. Y'all had that happen before? Like, dude, I'm getting a deal. 
Well, yeah, because you ain't getting what you think you're getting. But we don't carefully consider our steps on some things that we buy because it's we, we, well, it's only it's only nineteen ninety nine, only nineteen ninety five. Ain't that big of a deal? Uh, tell Dave Ramsey that. See what happens. We're, we're we you know we I, I say I think I said this, but Dave Ramsey has become a verb. We're doing Dave Ramsey, you know. We're going to Dave Ramsey that. But we, we, we carefully consider some things, but some things we don't. And we deceive ourselves because we think that that thing that we want to get, that we want to buy, where we want to go is going to make us happy. It ain't. You know, that trip that you went into debt to go on, you came back, and guess what? Reality checked back in as soon as you landed on that plane back in Houston or Lake Charles. You left your problems for a little while, but they were here waiting on you when you got back. And when we do that, sometimes the problem gets bigger when we get back, don't it? It grows. It gets bigger. But, but, man, that trip just made us happy. In the moment, it did. But we do that, man. We, we justify the things that we do and the things that we say and where we go and what we spend our money on, what we spend our time on. We justify and we deceive ourselves. Now, let me just tell you about self-deception. It's easy to deceive ourselves when emotions are high. You get emotional about that car. You Listen, you better be careful before you get in a car and test drive one after you got your ratty little thing that you were driving. Huh? I remember the first car we test drove, we were like, yep, we'll take it. <laughs> Down payment, no, I ain't got that. Monthly note, no, I can't do that either, but I'll take this car right here. You ever done that? You just that thing you had to have. You just, whether it was a car or something else, a big purchase, a boat, <laughs> break out another thousand, that's what boat stands for, right, Stu? Break out another thousand. B-O-A-T, break out another thousand. You just thought you had to have it. And I actually, I saw a video on the, on the, I think it was the five or the ten uh, most, um, the ten purchases that you most regret, basically. Uh, boat and RV were at the top of the list, and I was like, amen to that. It's, it's important, y'all, that, that, we, that we understand that we can't let our emotions drive what we do. See, if you have prudence, it's going to create purpose, and you're going to start taking the next steps. You're going to start, it's not just the next steps, the next right step. So this is important. It's easy to deceive ourselves because we thought that that thing was going to make us happy, ended up putting us on a path that led us somewhere we didn't want to go. And, and listen, I have sat in counseling sessions with people, and I'm sitting here, and I, and I watch their life. I watch them go down this path, and then they want me to give them something to do that will just bring a helicopter in, lift them up out of the woods, and bring them back to where they're supposed to be. That don't, you know how you get out of being lost in the woods? You turn around and go the other way. That's how you get out. There's no special potion. I don't have a special oil to anoint with your head with oil and get you out of the, the jam that you've gotten out of. You know how you do it? You do it. You get into the word. You take the steps. You turn around. That's what repent means, turn around. But sometimes we let our emotions drive where we go, and we don't have the prudence that we need that where God sent us. So y'all follow me today? We need some prudence in our life, don't we? We need some prudence in our life. I just love the word prudence. Just I hadn't even heard anybody use the word prudence in months, maybe years, except for George Bush. <laughs> Just wouldn't be prudent. I think he's the one that said it. Or Ronald Wright, one of them. Prudence is important. So prudence gives direction. It gives us some vision where to go. But prudence also receives knowledge. When you have prudence, you receive knowledge. You, you, you want to learn more. You, God gives you some insight when you have prudence. And let me just tell you, by the way, prudence is free. You don't have to buy it. I'm going to tell you how to get it. So I'm giving you three things about prudence. I'm going to give you three ways to get it. Prudence receives knowledge. The Bible tells us that in the, in the book of Proverbs. Simpletons, that we see simpletons or fools or, or those who aren't very smart or knowledgeable, are clothed with foolishness, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. You know, I don't know about you, but I'm going to be crowned with some knowledge. Man, I, I want to know more. I want to learn more. In fact, that word crowned in the original language actually means to be surrounded. Wouldn't it be amazing to be just surrounded with knowledge? And, and not so you can walk around with your chest out and boat up telling everybody you know everything, but just to know, man, if we just knew more, we'd make better decisions. If we knew more, we wouldn't be in the jam that we're in right now. What, look at the people around you who are on a path that you're just like, hey, it's not going to end well. What are they doing? Because I want to do the opposite. I want to go the other way. That's what prudence does. Prudence surrounds us with knowledge. So when you're prudent, you're going to have that information. You're going to have that knowledge that you need. 
And by the way, it's in the Word. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But your crown with knowledge. Prudence receives knowledge. Prudence is always, it's always growing. You're always learning. Here's the third thing prudence does is prudence takes precaution. When you're prudent about something, you're going to take precaution before you take the steps that you're about to take. It takes precaution. And, and listen, we're going to talk about temperaments over the next couple of weeks. And, temp- and depending on your temperament, you're more precautious or less precautious. Uh, you're, you're going to be more apt to take chances if you're a certain temperament and less if you're another. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly precautious. My wife is very precautious. Um, so so you, you just have that balance. And, it, and I see all the time you have, and there's a lot of fights in our marriages because the husband's super, you know, just out there, let's do it all, and the wife is there, and you meet in the middle. And that's good. You need that balance. I mean, y- y'all know, y'all are just like, yeah, my, my spouse is like this and I'm like that. We got to be precautious. You got to take precaution. You can't just... Throw, throw everything to the wind and go, you know what, we'll just do whatever. We'll go wherever. We'll say whatever. Well, that's a bad way to live. And it ain't biblical either. Take precaution. Here's what the Bible tells us in Proverbs 12. In fact, he says it twice. I'll show you another one. Prudence is a person who foresees danger and takes precautions. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. See, prudence foresees some things before it happens. That's why I challenge you to tap into the next generation. I, I love my My father's been in ministry what, for over five decades, Dad, you've been in ministry? Over five decades of a lot of what-not-to-dos. A whole lot of what-to-dos and a whole lot of what-to-dos. And I, I get to tap into that. Tap into the next generation. Tap into somebody who's already been there. About to go take a job, talk to somebody who's been at that job for 10 years and see why they're staying and why they hadn't left yet. You'll be, you might be concerned with some of the answers. Take precaution in the things that you do. It foresees danger. And it turns, it uh, does something different. So, so some people go blindly on and they have the consequences. Here's what the Bible says in the next verse, or another verse in the same book of Proverbs. The prudent person for these danger and takes precautions. The simpleton goes blindly. It says exactly the same thing in both those verses. It's so nice he had to do it twice. I'd say a verse is pretty important when you put it in Proverbs twice. And it's written almost exactly the same. Listen, we got to take precautions. And if you haven't done this with your kids, take precautions with their phones. Put some locks on there that they, only you know the code to, that they can't just get to every single thing that's available to them because uh, some of the stuff that's available to me scares me. Can you imagine being a 13, 14-year-old kid these days? Everything you can imagine that you could ever even want to know about is right there at your fingertips. Connections to people that you would never let your kids connect to. I'm telling you, take precautions, parents. Well, they just, they, they, they know what to do. No. You were 13 once. You were just as dumb as they are. Ignorant. I shouldn't have said dumb. Ignorant. Ignorant. Not dumb. Ignorant. You know, ignorance means lack of knowledge. You know why they don't have knowledge? Because they're only 13. They're only 14. They're only 17. Take some precautions. I'm begging you, parents, take precautions. Our next generation is at stake. Yeah, have you seen this stuff on TikTok? It's scary. And you know what it is today? It's become normal. It's become normal. I mean, this trash is normal. I mean, it just breaks my heart that that dancing and that stuff and saying those words is normal today. And we're just like, well, that's just what they, that's what kids do. Not my kids. Maybe my two girls, because they're grown and moved out now but I still jerk a knot in them. I don't care if you live in Oklahoma or not. I got eyes in Oklahoma. Set up some cameras, set up some cameras at the apartment complex. I don't care. There is a point, though, right? We, not in the house, outside the house. <laughs> Claire Bailey. We, we, is, is, there, uh, is there lines? Yes, you can cross lines. In fact, not long ago, Amy and I, we, we still have the phone trackers on our kids. And I'm like, they're married and grown, and they're paying their own bills now. I think it's about time for us to just back off of that. But I will still look. As long as they allow me to, I'll still see where they're at. There's a line, yes, but I'm begging you, parents, put some precautions on your kids. I don't care if their friends are doing it or not. It don't matter. Their friends have parents. That's on them. Your kids are on you. Put precautions. I'd say do it to yourself, too. Don't ever text someone of the opposite sex and just have a long-going 
conversation with them. We have precautions here at WRC. If you're in leadership here, uh, we don't we don't just text people who are on our team of opposite sex. We have multiple people in a group text. We, we set those precautions. Why? Because it's important. If there's a female that needs to talk to me, my door stays wide open. My wife is 10 feet away all the time. My door will never be closed with a female in the room with me, ever. Take precautions. I'm telling you, the world is watching. and they. It's not even just like, well, we tripped up a little bit. The world's tripping you up. The world's trying to trip you up. Like, oh, I thought you were set apart. Well, I am. But I didn't take precau- I didn't have prudence enough to take precaution. Are y'all with me today? Y'all need, you need some prudence in your life? Prudence is where it's at. I'm telling you, this is free stuff. You know how you get prudence? I'll show you here in just a second. But the main thing is just ask. God, give me some prudence. Then you got to go find it. Because here, here's the great thing about the Word of God. It will give you guidance where you need guidance. Financial relationships. I'm telling you, if you're going, addiction, if you're going through anything, the Bible has the answer. Isn't that amazing? It's alive. It's active. And God will speak. And you could have read a verse 10 weeks ago, and you're going through something. You read that same verse, it means something different. Because it's alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. Listen, precaution. Pre- take precaution. I'm just, I can't say it enough. I'm begging you. I'm telling, I don't care if your kids get mad and slam the door. It, all, it doesn't matter. Take the phone from them. Who owns it? You do. That phone's $1,000. I was 28 before I had $1,000, so I know your kid ain't paying for the phone. $1,000 for this. Pretty cool, though. It's very dangerous. Uh, It's an amazing servant. It's a horrible master. It's an amazing servant. It's a horrible master. Is it mastering you? Take precautions on your own phone. And I don't even talk about what you look at, but how long you're looking at it. It, it, it would, I don't know if you know this. Some of you know this and you're not doing it, but you can go to settings and see how long you've been on your phone. And not just what, but like social media, games, Bible app, whatever. And you can look and see. You don't have to wonder. You can go see. You're not going to, but you could. Because you don't want to know. I guarantee you, you don't want to know. I pastor a church. I don't want to know. Oh, well, I was actually reading my real Bible today, so that don't show up on there. We'll justify the mess out of it, won't we? Justify. Yeah, well, I had that time in the doctor's office that I just, that game was like, if I didn't hit that next level in the next 10 minutes, I was going to lose all my points. Yeah, because that matters in heaven. Sorry. Okay. Got all that out of my system. Take precaution. Please take precaution in every area of your life. And I'm telling you, if your kids aren't mad at you, you're doing parenting wrong, by the way. <laughs> parents are clapping the kids are like what are you talking about I'm never coming back here again <laughs> and that's another thing kids get to pick where they go to church that's crazy too I didn't get to, I didn't get to pick whether or not I went to church we went to church we, uh, we were talking Luke was asking me last night he was like so so do y'all just ever get to stay home from church I was like well, I never thought to ask <laughs> is that an option I remember I was, i tell you what, y'all, one day I thought I was going to die. So we went to my buddy's house on a Sunday afternoon, and we went swimming. And so, you know, we were just having a good time swimming, and they had a clock on their back porch. And I looked up, and church started at 6, and it was 5.55. My feet did not touch the ground. I rolled in second song. Hey, so I know what it's like to be a second song person. I rolled in second song. My parents never said anything about it. They probably didn't even care, but I cared. I mean, I never even, I never would have thought to say, let me just see if it's okay. You can't, you couldn't text back then. You couldn't even call people on the cell phone. You just, you just expected to be there. So, so I'm just telling you, and let me just take one more step real quick and I'll show you how to get it. When church becomes an option, church becomes an option. I, I've done it. I know. We were going to church and it's so like one Sunday morning, we we're just like, yeah, we're just not feeling 100%. We're just going to stay home. And the next week it was like, that was pretty cool. It was Sunday morning. We didn't go to church, and we didn't bust out in flames. <laughs> and so a little bit later, guess what? Six weeks later, we're like, <clears throat> what is that, man? And guess what? And then on Saturday nights, our kids at six, seven years old started asking, are we going to church tomorrow? That ain't good. That ain't good. Take precaution. Listen, do the things you're supposed to do and start putting some guards on some stuff that ain't supposed to be happening. Are you all with me on that? Don't, don't, don't text people of the opposite sex and keep that going. Don't get into a room with somebody of an opposite sex and close the door and leave it closed. Don't do that. I'm telling you, take 
precautions, take precautions, take precautions. So here's how you get it. So I told you about how amazing it is. It, listen, if David would have had prudence, his life would have been different. Now, some good things come out of it. I'll talk about that in a second. Like, just because you've been down that road doesn't mean God's going to leave you there. But if you want prudence, here's how you get it. First of all, dive into his word. It was amazing. We were in prayer time this morning, and somebody prayed this prayer right here, dive into his word. They used the word dive. Because I, I, had, I had dig, and then I had read, and then I was like, you know what? Dive just sounds right. It just feels like you're just diving off into it. And guess what? You can pretty much open the Bible. I don't recommend this, but you can open the Bible anywhere. God will show you something. Matthew 1's a little tough uh, with all the begats and the begats and the generations up. But God will show you something in there. There's some good truth in there, too, by the way. Dive into his word. Here's what the Bible tells us in the beginning of Proverbs. It said, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel. It's for, the Proverbs are for this reason. If you want to get some understanding and some knowledge, that's what Proverbs are for. It's for gaining wisdom and instruction and understanding words of insight. That's what Proverbs are about. So, so dig into his word. I'm telling you this morning, dig, dig, dig into his word. Proverbs is a book of wisdom. And let me just challenge you, tomorrow starts March. Can y'all believe March is here? March is here. Tomorrow. Somebody told me hurricane season got moved up to May. I ain't receiving that. March is tomorrow. March has 31 days. There's 31 Proverbs. Just take the, the, the Proverbs challenge and every single day read one chapter. They're not that long, 25, 30, 40 verses. It ain't, ain't going to take you long. Read a proverb. It's for gaining wisdom and getting words of insight. Some of y'all need that. I need that. No, nobody, you ain't outgrown. I don't care if you've been a Christian for 80 years. You ain't grown out, outgrown the word. You ain't outgrown the word. And if you ever do, whew, you might bust into flames. I don't know that that's going to happen. But get into the word. Here's the second thing. These are simple things I'm giving y'all. This isn't in-depth. This isn't trigonometry, y'all. Dive into his word if you want some prudence. And here's the second thing. This is very powerful. Do what he says. Do it. One of the most frustrating things about trying to help somebody get out of something is you know. Isn't it amazing, too? You see other people before they fall, before they see it. You, you can see them going down that path, and you're just like, oh, dude, they take one more step, it might be over. Their relationship's about to be done. Their, that addiction is about to overtake them. And we can see it in everybody else's life before they can see it. But here's the crazy thing. They can see it in your life. So don't just read the word. Don't be just a hearer of the word. Be a doer. And by the way, follow the word and not your heart, by the way. We've been talking about that. I'm going to keep saying that. Don't just do you, boo. Don't do you, boo. Boo jacked up. All right? I'm just telling you, do what he says. So here's a couple things real quick I'm going to give you. There's two different wills for God in your life. There's a general will. Don't get drunk with wine. I mean, that's a simple that's just a simple step. Just don't get drunk. Uh, don't treat your relationships horribly. That's pretty simple. Um, uh, don't go to some places you shouldn't go to. Don't look at some things you shouldn't look at. Don't, don't get addicted to anything but the Word of God. There's a lot of things that you shouldn't do. That's general will. And I'm just here to tell you, you're looking for some specifics in your life. Where do I go to work? Where do I send my kids to school? How do I handle this situation in my family? How do I handle my finances? Let me just, well, that's in the Word. But let me just tell you this. If you'll do his general will, he'll give you his specific will. But you can't take step two before you take step one. Do what he says. Here's what the Bible says in verse 3 of Proverbs 1. For it's, again, for Proverbs, they're for receiving instructions, prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence. There we see it again. This is what Proverbs is for. If you want prudence, go into the, word of Pro, the book of Proverbs. And I just challenge you just to, just to look up the word prudence in the book of Proverbs and see how many times it's in there. To those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. By the way, let me just tell you, young need knowledge and discretion. Don't you wish you had some knowledge and discretion when you were young? Uh, there's a reason that babies have 300 bones and adults have 206 bones. Yeah, because they're more malleable. They, you can make a few more mistakes. You can drop them on their head. They'll be okay. All right? Don't, don't do it. I'm just saying, like, they're a little more like the, things are flexible. Like, their bones are, I'm not saying test it. All I'm saying is there's a reason why their bones aren't brittle. Uh, because they don't have knowledge and discretion. There's a reason when they're three or four and jump off a couch that they don't kill them, you know? There's a reason they didn't break their bone because God's given them a little bit of grace. That's what grace looks like. Now, as you get older, don't do that because you're a little more brittle at that point. And here's the third thing I want to tell you. If you really want to get into his word, do what he says and never stop growing. 
Don't ever get to the point where you feel like you made it. You, you, you don't need any more. I don't need any more of that information. No, you need it. All right, you need it. We need it. We all need it. Have a teachable spirit. The verse 5 says, <clears throat> let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. For understand a proverb and its parables and sayings and riddles of the wise. So this is why we're doing it. Enthusiasm, this is, this is jumping ahead a few chapters, but it says enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes waste. Now, when we get hasty and we do the things we weren't supposed to do, there are some consequences. Right? If you've been down that road and you didn't have any prudence, there's going to be some consequences. I just, you just can't help it. It's just the, it's the, it's the, it's the rule that God has set in place. Actions have consequences, but there is forgiveness. So let me give you this word this morning. For God forgives us, but forgiveness does not negate consequences. You can have forgiveness, but there's still going to be some stuff coming. There's going to be some stuff that, that, that's still going to be um, repercussions for something that you've done. Now let me just, just give you a little quick word of encouragement this morning before we close. And that is, if you've been down that road and you find yourself in the middle of the woods not knowing what to do, and you turn around and you start going the other way, God will bless you. He will bless you. God forgives us, but we still have some consequences in our life. And let me just give you a quick, I want to go back to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1, and just show you something this morning about what we talked about, about David, right? David did that. He stayed where he wasn't supposed to stay, he, he, and then he did what he wasn't supposed to do. Um, here's what the Bible says about the book of Proverbs. The son of David wrote it. And I'm going to give you one guess as to who his mom is. That's Sheba. So, yes, David did what he wasn't supposed to do. Yes, he looked where he wasn't supposed to look and did some stuff and committed murder. But the outcome of Bathsheba and David's relationship was Solomon, the wisest man who's ever lived. So let me just tell you, I'm just I'm making this point to say you're not too far gone. You're not too far gone. God forgives us of all our sins. In fact, that's what he tells us. This is all of his benefits. He forgives all of our sins and heals all of our diseases, and he redeems our life from the pit. Redemption can be yours. You just got to get it. You just got to ask for it. Ch- change what you're doing. Get some prudence in your life. Set some boundaries. Take some precautions. And I'm telling you, get into the Word. You do what it says and never stop growing, and you'll have prudence. But then you, gotta, you have to do it. Do what it says. I'm telling y'all today, before you get home, put some codes on your kid's phone so they can't get to just everything that's out there. Everything that's out there is scary. I'm just telling you, have some prudence as a parent. Have some prudence as an employee or an employer. It's going to give you vision and focus and direction, and it's going to take some precautions to help you foresee some things you couldn't see. Get to know Wisdom's roommate. It'll change your life.